Uh, I take a positive, rule one, I take a positive approach to codes of ethics. Uh, I'm going to make assertions that are not going to necessarily follow these slides, so I'll try and stay in the time frame. Um, it's a mistake if you think that the function of a code of ethics and its primary business is to use as a whip to hurt people uh, or to take care of uh, people who are quite bad. Uh, I have a PhD in philosophy, so I'm going to give you the answer to the question that Aristotle could never answer. Uh, that is, what is ethics? And ethics, as far as I understand it, and codes of ethics related to professions and computing and science, is fairly simple. It's that behavior that we can consciously make that has positive or negative impacts on society, uh, and its citizens and the environment and so on. Um, there generally is two kinds of ethics that people talk about. One is a kind of minimalism, where you say, well, I'm ethical because I'm not hurting anyone. Well, I can applaud everyone in this room because you're all sitting there and not hurting anyone, and therefore you're doing something ethical. Thank you. Spot on. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's a much tougher other side, which is the really fun side of computing, which says, I can actually prevent harm, maybe actually do some positive things, and that sometimes gets labeled as ethical idealism. Okay. So we've got this kind of thing where, well, I'm okay, I'm not hurting anybody or it's my goal to move things forward. Now, when we talk about a profession, that concept comes has its roots back in medieval culture where um, priests joined monasteries and professed allegiance. And part of this uh, professional professionalism that they had was they professed a certain kind of service, took vows of poverty and things like this. Um, and they are the people who preserved education, things of that sort. Now, one of the things that happens is, as a result of being the person who um, has special connection with the information and has special kinds of knowledge, you get some responsibilities and you get some rights. Um, and we can talk about ethics from this generic picture that I gave you and parse it up. I look at it at basically three kinds of levels. There's a, there's a kind of ethics we have as citizens where uh, we act nicely toward one another, we don't hurt other people and things of that sort. Then as professionals, when you have special kinds of skills and so on, any profession, medicine, law, whatever, part of the theory is that what they do promotes the goodness of society and you're given a kind of control over things because you promise to use your knowledge in the service of society, okay? Then, um, he's looking for the mouse that isn't here. Then, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Go out of the box and look for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, then what happens is um, when you work in different professions, there are different particular laws, okay? So we can take this and we can say, Here's a way of building up. There's the core values where these things are common. Very important phrase here. Across cultures, people don't want to hurt other people in general. People value their respect for one another. People value the ability to do things and so on. These are called core values. And they cross cultures. You distract from aside. You distract from anything you're doing in ethics if you spend your time using phrases like multicultural. The fact that somebody doesn't want to shake you with their shake with left hand rather than right hand has nothing to do with whether you ought to do testing when you're engineering a product. No matter which hand they shake with, no matter which deity they bow to, if they're software developers, they talk about, yes, testing is important. Okay? So there's common core values. Then there's the things where, because you're a professional, you bear more responsibility than the average person in the street. What happens is if we're walking down the street and there's someone who gets injured, if I'm walking there and a doctor's walking there, I should keep my hands in my pockets while the doctor does his thing, or help the doctor, right? The doctor has a special kind of responsibility. And then there's the specific elements. So, okay, bottom level, us, humanity. There's a set of core values. If you're talking about a code of ethics, every code of ethics 
can have certain kinds of common values in them. The way you protect life, happiness, human freedom, ability to do different kinds of things, security, opportunity to do things, autonomy, and so on. Now, when you talk about this set of core values, I have this funny word harm over there. Because on the first or second slide, I talked about um, uh, ethical idealism and ethical minimalism and used the word harm. And when I use the word harm, most people, when they hear those things, think of physical harm. So I've got to be careful in building the car and so on. But if this view about core values, that any sustainable culture has these core values, then if you do something to diminish them, you're causing harm. Okay. So this is a slightly expanded notion of harm. Um, so anything you do to diminish people's freedom and ability and so on. Now, of course, there's trade-offs that you have to make in tough decisions all the time. But So here we have these core values. Now, when you talk about professionalism, that next level up, that also should be in your codes of ethics, um, where part of the thing that you're doing is saying, I, as a professional, will work in a certain way with you when I do things, and then you specific things in codes of ethics. I will try and do positive things. Okay. And so you give me some autonomy in choosing what I would do and how I design things. There's a certain level of trust here, but what happens is it's really a social contract because the people are saying, doctor, I'll let you decide what the rules of doctorhood are if you use doctoring for my well-being. And that's the trade-off. And we tend not to think about that when we talk about professionalism. Aside, I personally get upset at a lot of the things I'm seeing going on in large government reports from people on one side of the Atlantic that has multiple countries there. And in their reports, they say that they want to do professionalism one of the two reasons for doing professionalism and an interest in it is to decrease the gross uh, product, to improve the economy. And that's the least important, in my humble opinion. OK. So then we have this notion that you have this higher order of care. It's a fancy name that goes um, to prefer, uh, with professionalism. <coughs> Service. Professionalism. Again, unlike some of the stuff you're going to see in next week's discussion with the European Union meeting that you see in some of the European Union reports, it's not, its function is not to be self-serving. Okay? Uh, it's to be other-serving. All right. Uh, repeating myself, but profit is not the primary motivator. When we talk about professionalism, ethics is fundamental to professionalism, okay? Um, when we talk about it being fundamental to professionalism, one of the problems that we're now having, uh, I have this image of a wheel with spokes and a nice rim that moves smoothly. That wheel, the rim that moves smoothly and moves on, is society. We're talking about professionalism as learning technical skills. We're going to make you a professional. We have this school that will teach you C++, and when you graduate, you'll be a C++ professional. No, you won't. You'll have a technical skill, and it's like having a pile of spokes. Every couple, we're going to give you this other language, and it's this other spoke. And they're useless. What happens is the way you use these skills is what impacts society. And so my image of the wheel is there's this hub that has particular shape things for how your programming languages will go in and go out there, how your project management will go on, and so on. And that's what makes the wheel a perfect circle so it rolls. And if you don't bring ethics into this and you just consider this heap of spokes, you've made a mistake, in my humble opinion. When we talk about professional values that you may include in a code, uh, these are values that are listed in almost every code. Be impartial, disclose information others ought to know, respect rights, and so on. Uh, this analysis was uh, done by Quinn in his ethics book uh, where he goes through several codes. 
Okay. Codes of ethics. Um, everybody seems to want to have a different one. Everybody, uh, Austria, for example, currently. Uh, <laughs> um, the European Union wants a European Union version. And what the heck is different about European Union software development versus Malaysian software development? Okay, I've given these talks, talks like this all over the world. And it's the same set of facts about the way you do things. Okay. Um, you, a code of ethics. Now, here's this thing we're going to talk about, a code of ethics. Okay? Um, one of the things a code of ethics does is to teach society. It actually instructs them about what they can expect from us. That's letting them know about what the part of the social contract is. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to cheat on the tests. If I find something's wrong, I'm going to let you know about it. I'm going to do whistleblowing. One of the things that's happened is, in this software engineering code of ethics that I developed, one of the amazing things to me was, you started getting translations from all over the world, from China, from Japan, from Italy, from Croatia, where people wanted to adopt this for their computing society. Now what happens is, self-interest gets in the way and they take what they like from it and modify their code and stick it in so it now becomes the Croatian Computer Society Code or the Australian Computer Society Code. But it's still taking those principles and incorporating them. Okay. Um, a code of ethics is a tool for us because it helps us make tough decisions. If your code of ethics doesn't do that, it's making a mistake. Now, some people think in order to make decisions, what they have to do is to list everything saying, you must do mutation testing when you have this type of thing. You must do path testing when you have this type of thing. That's wrong. That's building the earlier, you're building a, a code of ethics for social media or you're building, and social media is going to change tomorrow. What you need in a code of ethics is, here's the things you ought to be doing. This is what you look to try and do, OK? Um, and so when we talk about a code of ethics, it ought to help you do a couple of things. Here's some simple list of skills you ought to get that you ought to be able to have come out of a code of ethics. You read the code of ethics, and it ought to help you think about some things you didn't before. That is, identify some problems. Maybe identify the causes of those issues. Think about what some alternative actions are. And then actually select workable solutions for these. Now, sometimes it may be a fancy moral solution. Sometimes it may be a technical solution or something else. <coughs> OK. Um, this is a repeat. Uh, I've already brought this in. Um, when, you when you do analysis of uh, the impact of an action, one of the things you've got to do is start to consider the stakeholders outside of the profession. Sometimes professions in their codes of ethics limit Who's going to be considered? I know of one country computer societies, one country computer society code of ethics that has the only stakeholders being the customer and the developer, and not the people who are impacted by the explosion in the airbag or the way in which you change the street lights and traffic flows and so on. Um, what you need to do is to provide direction to people. That is fundamental principles rather than detailed individual sentences. Um, it needs to inspire you to think about who's infected by your work, um, whether you're treating other human beings outside of your profession with the proper respect, um, and who's going to be empowered by your decisions. Okay. Codes of ethics are not primarily about prohibited actions. They're there to encourage you and direct you. Codes of ethics get clumsy when they start to explain things about what all of the due process laws are. That belongs in a separate document if you're going to say you're thrown out of the society. They should encourage us to do good um, and see our actions as contributing to a, a broader society. Um, when we have a code of ethics, it's a code of ethics 
I know each country has its codes of ethics, but if you really start to look at them and you start to look at the different societies and what they're doing, they're all pushing the same thing. Let's do a good job. Let's experience some of the excitement of computing and do positive things. Okay. Um, and that's my story on codes of ethics ever so briefly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.